Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, we're going to look at the greatest integer function, also called the step function. And when we graph these a little bit later, you'll see where it gets that name step function from. But as a definition, the greatest integer function is given by f of x equals the greatest integer of x and is defined as the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So if you look at the symbol here, we've got two sets of parallel bars and they look similar to absolute value, but notice there are two sets instead of just one set. So that is how we will uh, display the greatest integer of x. Okay. Now the definition again is that it is defined as the greatest integer. And remember an integer is like one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. So positive and negative whole numbers. Okay. So the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So we'll start with just making a simple table here of inputs and outputs, x's and y's here. So if we input and we're talking about f of x equals greatest integer of x here. So if we input a uh, 0 in here, for example, then the output's going to be 0. If we input a 0.5, the output is going to be a 0. If we input a 1 here, the output will be 1. If we input 1.5, the input will be 1. If we input 2, the output would be 2. If we input 2.5, the output would be 2, okay, because it is the greatest, it is defined as the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So the greatest integer less than or equal to 0 is 0. The greatest integer less than or equal to 0.5 is 0. The greatest integer less than or equal to 1 is 1. The greatest integer less than or equal to 1.5 is 1. The greatest integer less than or equal to 2 is 2. The greatest integer less than or equal to 2.5 is 2. Okay, so our outputs are never going to have decimal values. They're always going to be whole numbers and negatives. Okay, never any decimals here. All right, so let's make a table of some negative inputs so that we can see how that will look. So... Uh, if we put in negative 3.5, for example, as an input, the output, now you have to be careful here, it's not negative 3, it's actually negative 4. The output for negative 3 would be negative 3. Negative 2.5 would be negative 3. Negative 2 would be negative 2 negative 1.5 would also be negative 2 and negative 1 would be negative 1. Okay, so this initially may not make sense. So let's think about what we're doing here. So for example, negative 3.5, I think it'll be easier if we put this on a number line like this. So we ha would have negative 4 here, negative 3 here. So we were talking about an input, an x value of negative 3.5. need to put a positive there on the number line too. So we have negative 3.5 here as our input. Well, your initial thought might be that the answer, the, apps, the uh, greatest integer of negative 3.5 is negative 3, but that's not right because remember, it's great, it is defined as the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So if we were at negative 3.5, we cannot go to the right on the number line. We have to go to the left on the number line. So the greatest integer for negative 3.5, we must go left to the nearest integer, so that would be negative 4. When we're at negative 2.5, we must go left on the number line to the nearest integer, and that would be negative 3. For negative 1.5, we go left on the number line, and the nearest integer is negative 2. Okay, so that those are the basics of what the greatest integer function is. Now let's apply it with a few examples. All right, here we have 
four examples. So example one says find the greatest integer for 18.6. So remember we are going from 18.6 and then we're going to the greatest integer less than or equal to 18.6. So we need to go left on the number line. So the closest integer to 18.6 that's left on the number line is 18. So the answer there would be 18. So the greatest integer of 18.6 is 18. The greatest integer of negative 18.6. Remember we're going left on the number line. This one was the one that was a little more complicated. So it's not negative 18. That's not the answer here because that would be going right on the number line. We need to go left on the number line. So the nearest integer to negative 18.6 that is left on the number line is negative 19. Okay, we don't round here. That's not what we're doing. We take whatever is the input here. So in this case, negative 18.6, and we go left on the number line to the nearest integer. Okay, because it's defined as less than or equal to. So the greatest integer less than or equal to this number. All right, now it's, it's asking us to graph the greatest integer function. Okay, so let's think back to our table here. And when our input is 0, so when our x is 0, we're going to also be equal to 0. So our output would be 0. And if our um, input here, our x value is 0.5 right here, our y value, our output would still be 0. So we actually have a little horizontal line segment all the way up to 1 where we have an open circle. Okay, It's not including 1 here because as soon as you get to 1 up here, you step. You step up because when x is 1, y is 1. And this continues when x is 1.5, y is still 1. When x is 1.7, y is still 1. When x is 2, it's not 1 anymore. It steps up to right here. And we have a solid dot. So when x is 2, y is 2. When x is 2.5, y is still 2 because it's the greatest integer less than or equal to. When x is 2.7, still 2. When x is 3, it's not 2 anymore, it steps up to 3, right here. When x is 3.1, y is 3. When x is 3.5, y is 3. When x is 3.9, y is 3. When x gets to 4, we step up to 4. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now, let's go in the negative direction. We're going to have exactly the same look here. So at negative 1, when x is negative 1, y is negative 1. When x is negative 0.5, y is still negative 1. And we step all the way over, or pardon me, we go all the way over until we get to 0. When x is 0, we have to step up here. All right, and then we'll have the same pattern here. So when x is negative 2, y is negative 2. When x is negative 1.5, y is still negative 2. So we come all the way over here and then open circle again. Because as soon as x is negative 1, we have to step up to negative 1. All right, and then we go here. So when x is negative 3, uh, y is negative 3. When x is negative 2.5, y is still negative 3. Come all the way over and then open circle once we get to negative 2. Okay, so that's how it looks. So it's a step function because, look, it looks like, we're stepping up each time, we're stepping up each time, we're stepping up each time. That's where the uh, name step function comes from. All right, so now let's look at the uh, following for the greatest integer function. So domain, all right? Well, our domain is all real x's because, look, every single x coordinate will be touched by this graph at some point. So we can say all real or all real x either way. Okay, our range, notice we touch a y value of 0, then we touch a y value of 1, then we touch a y value of 2, then of 3, but nothing in between, no decimal values. So in this case, we have to say that the range is the integers. Okay, the integers, positive and negative whole numbers. Okay, all right, now the x-intercept, look, we have 
a lot of x-intercepts because it's intercepting the x-axis at 0 all the way up to but not including 1. Okay, so it this is a little bit of a weird way to do it, but it's the only way to describe it well. It's all x's over this interval. Okay, so from 0 to 1, not including 1. So the 0 gets a bracket. This is our interval notation. So the x-intercept is all x's over the interval 0 to 1. All right, our y-intercept occurs just right here at 0. Okay, discontinuities, well, we're discontinuous at all of the integers. Okay, when x is an integer, we are discontinuous. Like when x is 1, discontinuous. When x is 2, discontinuous. When x is 3, discontinuous. When x is 0, discontinuous. Because we had to pick up our pencil at x equals 1, at x equals 2, at x equals 3 to draw this graph. So when x equals all integers is what we're going to say there. All right, so let's look at example five, our last example, and this is a word problem actually applying the greatest integer function. All right, so here we have example five. It says a cruise ship charges guests $2 for any connect time less than the first full minute in their internet cafe. All right, so for each additional portion of a minute that is just less than a minute, an additional 50 cents is charged. Give the function that specifies these charges for any connect time t in minutes and graph the function. So I've gone ahead and uh, sketched uh, an, the t-axis for time here and our y-axis will be uh, dollars in this case because those are the two things we're talking about. We're talking about time and minutes and we're talking about dollars. So to start right here, we to apply these greatest integer functions, we need a start point. And our start point in this case is $2 because as soon as you connect, so basically at time zero, you're already charged $2. And then all the way up to the first full minute, it's still $2. So it's always easier to graph these things, I think, before you start trying to write the equation. So right here at $2, it's solid. So at time zero. And then all the way up to one minute where we have an open circle. Okay, so we've identified that start point and, and that's good for one full minute there. Now we need to look for our step. So how much are we going to step up on the y-axis each time? And that's given to us right here. 50 cents is charged. So as soon as we go to one full minute, we jump our step to $2.50, right? We step up 50 more cents. And now that continues for the next minute all the way up to not including two and we need an open circle there. And then at two minutes we have to step up and now we're going to be charged three total dollars and no matter how much time we use between two up to three minutes we're charged three dollars and then we need an open circle step up 50 cents across open circle step up 50 cents and across like this okay so that's what our function actually looks like in this case. So now we need to write the function. So we come over here and write this thing. So f of t is equal to, we always start with our start point, $2, because even at zero, when you as soon as you connect, they're charging you $2. So our start point will be listed first. This is similar to a linear function with your y-intercept. So in this case it would be 2 for $2. That That's what you start with. And then in this case they're charging us money so it's going to be plus 50 cents because that's our step value here. The step value is going to be included every time we're stepping up 50 cents and then here's where the greatest integer comes in. 50 cents times the greatest integer of, I'll put x, but we're talking about t here, so let me fix that. So the greatest integer of t. Okay, so let's check this and make sure it works. So if at time 0.5, so one half minute, so this would be 2 plus 0.5 times the, the greatest integer closest to uh, 0.5 minutes would be 
zero, right? So it would be 50 cents times zero, which is just zero. So we would have a value of $2. So that actually works out. Let's start a table here. So we have our T here, and we have our F of T in dollars here. Okay, so at time 0.5, we would be charged $2. Okay, that's right. At time one minute, one minute, our graph is showing we should be charged $2.50. And that's going to be correct because if we plug in a 1 here, it's going to be 50 cents times 1, which is just 50 cents. Add $2 to it and you would get it. All right, now let's put this in our calculator now that we've identified the function. And we, I had some notes above on how to do that. So let's put this in. We go to y equals and then it's 2 plus. Then we go to the math menu over to number. So we arrow to the right to the num menu and we choose option 5 for integer. That's the greatest integer function. So um, actually, I need to put in my 50 cents first. So 0.5 math over to num and now integer. So 0.5 or 50 cents times the greatest integer of x. Close parentheses. Okay. Now, if we zoom 6 on a standard window, you can see it looks like a line here but it's actually not it's got the little steps going up so let me change my window uh, to be more like our graph so from negative one and we'll make an x max of say six and then we'll make our y minimum negative one just so we can see the axis and then our y max uh, we'll make that five here so you graph this thing and there you can see the steps stepping up stepping up each time. Now let's look at our table and our table is looking correct. Let's set a table set of 0.5 so it's going up so we can see this time in between each minute. Check our table and at half a minute uh, we said two and then at uh, one minute it's going to be actually let's make our table start at 0.5 that's good and let's make it go up 0.5 at a time so that we can see everything we want. So at half a minute, we're charged $2. At one minute, $2.50. Okay, so that's right. At 1.5 minutes, so right here, we should still be charged $2.50. Yes, that's correct. At two minutes, we should step up to $3. We do. At 2.5 minutes, we should still be charged $3. Yep, it's looking right so far. At three minutes, we should step up to $3.50. And we do at 3.5 minutes, we're still charged $3.50, so everything checks out. All right, so that's it for the greatest integer function. And now you also know how to put it in your calculator uh, to check your work. But again, on these word problems, you start with the uh, beginning amount, so the initial amount you're going to be charged. And then you have your step value, and that's going to be paired with your greatest integer portion. All right, so I will see you in the next video.